welcome to the MBS Show, Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I hate road trips. They're fun. Ugh, the personal space that hygiene can sit. Ah, 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 terrible. Do, do that? Probably, I don't know. I've never been to one. <laughs> and also joining us is Seppi. We're off on the road to friendship. Just a bit of key, but I'll take it. And also, I, <laughs> and also I haven't heard this song forever, I'm sorry. <laughs> and also joining us is Doterra. Alright, so I got my berries packed, I got my Poke Blanket ready. Did I miss anything? A Pokeball. You missed your Pokeball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a Pokeball. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it's in my pocket. Oh. Uh, wow. Okay, how about we keep this going? Yeah. Oh, yes. She's got she's got a firm hold of your balls. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to the MBS show. <laughs> so, anywho, into this. <laughs> and watch this, I spy the Pokeballs are blue. <laughs> Excuse me, you stop staring at them. Pokeballs so blue. Well, I admit they're a little hard to see, given how small they are, <laughs> at per se. <laughs> I am hurt. <laughs> I need an adult. Hey, you're the one who wanted to keep this going. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry, Torterra, I don't But mean I wasn't to. the one who mentioned the Pokeballs. He started it. <laughs> but I, in my defense, I, I almost kicked him, kicked him, but I missed because they're so small. <laughs> but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 19, Road to Friendship. In this episode, Trixie is invited to bring her magic show to Saddle Arabia, and she can think of no one better to bring along than her great and powerful assistant, Starlight Glimmer. So, let's get into first impressions. Silver, what do you think of this episode? Well, this is a fun one. I, I enjoy Trixie and Starlight for the fact that theirs is a friendship based on heavy imperfection. I mean, heavy imperfection. So, getting to see them break down, have all the these uh, conflicts... Starting off with this great song where they nearly die five times. Uh, just a lot of fun. Also, there's a moment in the song that I'll talk about later where I just uh, I had a little moment of triumph. I can say, yes, I called it. Oh, really, though? No. Yes, but not in the way you think. Okay, okay. And Sappy, what do you think of this episode? Like, it's been a while now. Oh, boy. Um... This is the first episode in a very long time where I actually liked a certain character way more than the other in this. And I was actually pretty shocked considering the uh, progression that Starlight Glimmer made suddenly getting tanked. And you know what? I kind of actually find it okay. But at the same time, it's like, why? Why? I'm I'm not gonna get into it until later. I actually did enjoy this episode. It, it definitely uh, made the friendship stronger, but at the same time, oh boy! It's okay. But why ask why? We'll we'll tackle that later. It's hard for me to explain. We'll tackle that later. And Tara, what do you think of said episode? Well, first impressions, it was pretty good. I enjoyed the episode. I liked the comedy, and I loved how. Trixie and Starlight were throughout the episode and they did have their disagreements but then later on they made up for it and I liked it. Trixie did nothing wrong! <laughs> Alright. Well, she did one thing wrong. She did one thing wrong. She brought along Starlight Glimmer. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but anyway, as for me... Other than that, she did nothing wrong. <laughs> as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the scenario. The song was awesome. And when I heard the song in multiple languages like it got spoiled early in Denmark, Norway and Sweden and if I'm not mistaken there's also a French version of the song out there somewhere and I like the song a lot a lot a lot so yeah I love this episode a lot anyway uh, let's get into it so if you have not watched this episode yet pause here and go watch it first welcome back hope you enjoy the episode and so Let's start off our adventure with a magic show. Ooh, a magic show in Ponyville specifically. Ooh, I guess. Yes. So it seems that the great and powerful Trixie is trapped in a box. And her assistant, Starlight, 
is hyping it up. And in the crowd, we get to see Cadence and Flurry Heart and Twilight being all scared and whatnot. And Starlight here is a really good hype person. And it seems that Trixie escaped. Oh no! But that means who is in the box? Who's in the box? This is good. Oh great, now you got me thinking of William Shatner when he uh, parodied Seven. What the? Is in the box. <laughs> He's like, he had TJ Hooker, America's Most Wanted host, and William and Captain Kirk all driving in the same car. <laughs> but... By the way, I love how they depict Flory Hart in this. Yeah. It's one of those it's one of those times where they treat her as a character and not just this powerhouse. True that, true so, that. So so she covers her face because she's scared, but she peeks because she wants to know. I did the same thing when I was a little little little. <laughs> Aw. Oh, so cute. You, but anywho, uh it seems that in the box is Granny Smith. Somehow they teleported her into the box. Oh no. That kid be safe. And everybody cheered because their magic act was really awesome. By the way, there's a really strange pony in the background there. Like, he seems off. I can't put my finger on it. But anywho. Oh, oh, that's that's racist, Norman. Hey! Uh, that's foreshadowing. What are fingers? I don't see nationalities. <laughs> I just see threats. <laughs> that's his... No, no silver. Bad silver. Don't let me get the newspaper. See, we're going to build a wall around Ponyville. Okay, no. And we're going to get Celestia to pay for it. Did Trixie did that before with the glass dome? Yes, but that was more that was more of a pay wage thing. She wanted to break a glass ceiling. <laughs> oh, but anywho. Um... Also, I'll give you the French version of the On the Road to Friendship. We surrender, we surrender, <laughs> we surrender, we surrender. <laughs> no, that's the Italian version. <laughs> Oh, the Italian version is we, we're on this side now. We're on this side. We're on this side now. No, we're on no, this side. no, Bat Silver. Have you never seen Italia? Oh, my goodness. Bat Silver, Bat Silver. No, no, no. What flag? What the flag? I'm very bad. Thank you, Norman. Oh, boys. But anyway, we get to see Cadence talking to Twilight, saying that she's glad that she came to Ponyville for a visit and whatnot. And both of them kind of told Trixie that she's an awesome stage magician and whatnot. And yeah, uh, they were having fun. And... Cadence mentioned something that you two were great together, and I ship it. <laughs> and they dance it, which is the first time we get to see Flurry Heart going, Mom, you're embarrassing me. Yeah, you can see her face cringing like, oh no. And also, uh, Trixie and Starlight do the whole, oh, glad we're not them. Which is Sean Freuda at its finest. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, with that out of the way, Trixie mentions something about... Uh, thanks for helping me perform on stage, Starlight. You're really awesome. And probably we should hang out more. Yeah. And Starlight says, yeah, I agree. But hey, you know what? I got work to do, so I'll catch you later. Poof. So while Trixie is trying to put back stuff in her wagon, we see that off-character pony that comes along. He seems like a unicorn, and he seems that... He comes from Saudi Arabia. That's cool. When you look at this screenshot, oh, you're, you're saying that it's like, oh, the 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 shipping has intensified. <laughs> Hello, stranger. <laughs> you know what they say about really tall horses? Oh uh, no! <laughs> what? They have to duck over under doorways. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Sid Pony has a name. His name is no. Hufar. Oh, he does have a name. Yep. Yeah, Hufar. <laughs> and are you sure he's not instead of in a nutshell is he in a little blue pokeball yeah <laughs> what is that supposed to mean so anywho uh, how far here just tells Trixie how he enjoys the performance and whatnot they banter a bit and how far says you know uh, probably you should come to my neck of the woods which is Saddle Arabia was it yes Saddle Arabia and perform there I bet my uh, townsfolk or people would love your show and Trixie says like that would be awesome and whatnot but my small little wagon here probably won't survive the trip and Hufaro here just says you know I could probably just trade wagons with you and Trixie says ah oh, no no man like me and wagon here we go way back man like we're Texas thieves and stuff like through the tin and tin of times whatever you call it and stuff like yeah we're bros you mean the thick and thin? Yeah, whatever you say. 
I, you ever get the sense that Trixie maybe loves that that uh, carriage a little too much? Does she have like a like a pet name for it? Waggy. <laughs> But still, won't you do that? Like, don't you? A lot of people name like their cars, like give like their cars pet names. Yeah, so. that's it. Trixie's going it's on my strange bad. addiction. <laughs> Wait, Trixie's going on your what fiction? My strange, my strange addiction. It's a show. Ah. It's on DLC. Oh my god! But anywho, um... wait. You mean you two watch shows other than Pony? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Be gone, disloyals. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Silver. <laughs> You are, Silver. You are excused well, I for guess terror. you won't be watching Say Yes to the Dress with me anytime soon, huh? Silver, mm. last week we watched yes. Little Witch. I don't think it's a good time to bring that up now. I think it's a good time for you to shut your cake hole. <laughs> oh, oh, so all you weeb trash, you, you want to complain that you watch a show other than My Little Pony, yet you won't... <laughs> Hush, child, I'm being indignant on your behalf. Torterra, back in your Pokeball. I don't have a Pokeball. I yeah, have you a... can't tell him when getting his Pokeball. <laughs> Only I can do that. I, I've i got a blue Pokeball with your name on it. Oh, come at me, bro. <laughs> All right, anyway, anyway. Sorry, but, uh... <laughs> but anyway, let's get anyway. back on track. So, Trixie goes to Starlight for some counseling. Long story short, Starlight says... It seems that you made up your mind and you really want to go. And Trixie here says, true, but I do intend on inviting you on this trip. So would you like to join? And Starlight says, wow, really? I would love to follow you. Let's go. And so they do. Except uh, first there's that shot of Trixie as she's talking about her traveling. It looks like she's saying, now Starlight, counsel me like one of your French mares. Oh, please, but <laughs> anywho, after the next scene, we can see Trixie trying to clean up her wagon a little bit and notice that, oh, uh, Starlight is bringing her stuff along. Oh no, that's not good. And some of the stuff that Starlight is bringing along is all good, but I don't know, like, what, what do you guys think? In the efficiency department? I mean, I'm pretty sure you could skip pretty much 90% of the things she was bringing. True, but you have to remember that Starlight here never went on a road trip before, and this is her real close friend, so she's doing stuff by the book. Well, I think it shows how civilized Starlight has become, because she used to come from a town in the middle of nowhere, where every, no one owned anything, and now suddenly she's uh, given into the creature comforts quite a bit. Mm -hmm. True that, true that. But most of her stuff are just board games and Spices for camping and a uh, raft. Hmm. Okay. Well, the, the raft, raft might be practical. In fact, it turns out to be Oh, practical. yeah. True, true. Tara, what do you have to say, man? You've been quiet. Two things about skipping the raft. Well, I mean, the I kind of used to pack those kind of things when I was little, and I used to go camping, and I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to pack all my games and some fun campfire stuff, and it just hits me right here in the heart. <laughs> oh. All right, then. But still, uh... Ooh. Torterra took a hit to the heart. It's super effective. <laughs> and who's to blame? The show, that's true. Oh, you give it a bad name. Shot through the heart! And what you're to blame, darling. You yeah. give it a bad name. Yeah. <laughs> We're home. But anywho, uh, the, both of them tries to, you know get along, try their new bits and whatnot, and says, like, you know what, I, I guess this could work, yeah, like, like um, it's a bit tight and small, but, you know, we, we should probably share and stuff, because people like to ship us together, but, you know, we're not like that, so, we'll, we'll see how it goes, yeah, 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 now, time to play song, yay! And we've reached that moment I talked about, that moment where I called it. What is it? Okay. On Equestria Daily, I wrote an editorial about the the criticism you're overanalyzing a kid's show mm -hmm. or overthinking a kid's show. And at one point, I talked about, you know, somewhere I showed the screenshot of Twilight and, uh, of Trixie and Starlight and the wagon all bound up in vines and swinging. Right. And the caption, I said, you know, somewhere in the fandom, people are questioning the tensile strength of those vines. <laughs> Not two weeks later, I'm a part of a roundtable discussion talking about this here episode. And one of the members says, 
I don't believe those vines could hold up that wagon. <laughs> and, and I said, and I said nothing at the moment, but in really was like, yes, I called it. Our obsession si- shines through. <laughs> People are calculating the tensile strength of vines in a children's cartoon. <laughs> well, that's a victory for you, Silver. It's very hollow victory, but I'll take it. Yay. <laughs> But anywho, with that, well, awesome victory out of the way. What do you think of this song, guys? Like, I personally love this song. This song is up there in my favorite list. Like, this song is catchy. It's different from the norm that we've been getting. And I just love the duo singing here. Like, this is just awesome. It's the best song I've heard in a very long while in my True, true. Like, I I don't think I've heard a good song from Friendship is Magic since, um, you know, other than the movie. I'm not counting the movie. I'm talking about the actual show itself. The the song back in, like, season six, I believe, it it was the one with uh, Coriander Ah, and uh, Saffron Marsala. Mm -hmm. Ah, Spice Up Your Life. It was with Pinky and Rarity. I think it was called It's Gonna Work. It is. Okay. Yeah, that that was like the last good episode I remember seeing in Friendship is Magic. And, you know, I, I'm glad, like, you know, the writers who, you know, do the songs haven't lost their, like, touch completely, if that makes sense. All right, all right, right. And Silver, Otero, whoever wants to go first? Ooh, Torterra. Maybe the old should go first. <laughs> well... Well, then, uh, you're an older-style Pokemon. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> I'm not that old-style Pokemon. Oh, come on. You're, like, Gen, what, five? No, Gen four, four, to be exact. I'm sorry, to be exact, which? Four. Oh, Gen four. Oh, that's so quaint. What are we on now, Gen 576? Yeah, something like that. No, actually, Gen seven, going on Gen eight. Yeah, yeah you're old. <laughs> <laughs> old Pokemon is old. You're Fine. especially old if you're OG. Oh, anywho. <laughs> anywho. Actually, I do want Torterra to go <laughs> first. <laughs> All right, then. It's funny how they start up with the song saying, like, oh, yeah, it's not like we're going to break in the song like how Twilight and the others do. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah, you break in the song anyways. And I do like the song. It's very catchy. I, I still remember it. But throughout all the song, I'm wondering, do you not pay attention to the danger that's going on? Like, you're falling off a cliff into a river, but you're still singing. Yeah, I mean, like, when you're having fun, you don't notice the danger. But still, it's like, you should at least notice. And even when they're sinking, then after they're like, oh, no, we got the raft. We'll just pull up the raft while it's inside the wagon, you know? It's fine. We're still the happiest friends together. True, 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 true. Uh, Silva. Well, I'm of a very similar view, especially in the fire swamp. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just singing happily, r- rubbing cheeks, Rrr. and just sidestepping flames like the, it ain't no thing. True, true. Although, while they're going through the fire swamp, do you notice a certain someone's missing? Missing? Missing. The, the chimera? It's missing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The chimera has a schedule to keep, and... It's not. It's time to come out yet. So yeah. Oh, oh, Dorman. I, I don't. I'm getting a little ahead of myself for the for the season finale. But I think the Chimera had a very different appointment. Oh yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, like the Chimera was set to come around five thirty, and Strixie and Starlight's song number here is about three thirty. So they're off. Like if they came a bit later, the Chimera will be there. I don't know. I, th- I think the Chimera's ass had an appointment with Celestia's hoof. Probably. I don't know, man. Like <laughs> They could have just got their package from the male ponies and then be like, okay, bye. Oh, yeah, true that. That's why their male pony wagon broke down. Like, the, what, Chimera didn't give a tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You are not Mindy. <sighs> I can cause just as much harm. <laughs> Who's that Mindy? is very true, yes. Oh, and if you don't get that reference, I'm about to make an even older one. Starlight is the new Frogger of Equestria. Okay, I understand that one. You got that one, but you... You you didn't get the Mindy reference? No. Oh. Yeah, I love you, bye-bye. 
Oh, it's... it's time for Animaniacs. Oh, okay. Oh, and there's Zany okay. to okay. the I max. Remember now. I just clicked it in my head. Oh, okay. hey, there, there we, we go. go. Anyway, anyway. So that uh, memory loss is a sign of older age, you fourth gen Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> but anyway. Cool. Now, now, Silver, are you at least proud of me for one reason? You got the reference and you made it. Yes. But anywho. Oh, Th- that's good. oh Dizam girl. That was the shiznit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not affecting her silver. <laughs> but anywho, let's continue on. So they arrive at Sunembla and they make a pit stop there and to refuel on stuff. So Trixie here has years of experience traveling on the road, tries to tell Starlight that we need to save money because uh, we can't overspend because we have a budget to take care of. And Starlight goes and buys a falafel. Great. Falafels are good. Not when you're... I never had one. Uh, not when you're on a budget. You need to try one. It's pretty good. Not the baked kind, though. The baked are okay, but not as good as like, the fresh out of the fryer. And it's vegan. No comment. Hmm. But, uh, wait, wait how, ca- how can it be all vegan and healthy if it comes out of a fryer? I never said it had to be healthy and be vegan. You said that. But, but that's all vegans ever talk about. Well, the thing with vegan food, Silver, is that, one, it has to have no animal byproducts to them. Like, you know, no milk, no eggs, nothing like that. However, at the same time, Oreos are categorized as vegan. They don't have anything organic about them. Have you ever asked what's in the the filling? The answer will haunt your dreams. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm glue. to look it up now. No, no. But, uh, yes, give in to the temptation. Uh, Go, Torterra. Discover. Anyways. Yeah, but anywho, we, we see a chink in the armor of friendship for this one because, oh no, Trixie is annoyed. But hey, it's all good. It's all good. Um, they wait in line, or Trixie wants to wait in line to buy wheat cakes. And Starlight noticed that, hey, there's another store there that has wheat cakes, so why not buy there? And Trixie says, oh no, we have to wait in this line. There's a reason for it. And anybody want to guess what that reason is? Wait, a pop quiz? I wasn't ready for this. Yeah, so anyone? I'm going to say that there's a convention and all the rooms are booked and now you have to sleep on the floor while someone snores in a bed, and it's really uncomfortable, and you end up hating your roommates. That totally didn't happen to me at an anime convention. No, sir. Oh, boys. But um, in all honesty, like the wheat cake line thing, I'm guessing that is the cheapest? Probably. Or just your favorite. Uh, probably. But yeah, so they wasted time on the store, so when they go to get a room in Sunembla, uh, all of the innkeep says... Sunembla's all book and stuff. Oh, no room in the inn. That means they have to go and, and find a manger. Yes, I, I did. I just went there. I got all religioso. Oh, no. <laughs> but anywho, so um, Trixie is a bit peeved by this scenario here. But hey, um, they, 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 they fight for a bit because reasons. And Trixie blames Starlight for not reserving a room and whatnot. And... In the end, they make up and they say they're sorry, which is kind of cool, which is kind of cool. But <laughs> the next scene is the one that challenged their friendship. And it seems that their cabin or their wagon is a bit too small for two ponies to live in. And yeah, like, they have their own thing, like, they have their own problems where Starlight snores like a bear. Although I like Trixie's suge- uh, solution, she gags Starlight. Kinky. Which I will say, yeah, th- this trip has really strengthened their bondage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, still, and oh, who, who knows? Uh, Trixie s- sleep speaks in her sleep. Yay. I-, I think this is a good example of if you've been traveling with someone or you stay in a room with someone. I I think Silver just mentioned this earlier, but I'm just going to mention my own experiences. Uh, Sharing a room with a good friend and said friend snores like a lawnmower. And that can be great. I am the lawnmower. (laughs) (laughs) 
It doesn't even sound like a lawnmower. <laughs> But still, but still. Oh, man. I'm guessing Silva experienced this. Tara or Seppi, you guys experienced this before? Well, for me, I haven't really experienced what Starlight or Trixie have, but I do remember that when one time at a convention I was sharing a bed with someone, and they couldn't stop moving, and they were hogging the blankets. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sleep on the floor then. Well, in my experience, oh, boy. Um... <laughs> The first time I ever, well, actually, no, like, one of the second times I ever shared a room with Common. And, uh, you know, he's like, oh, I don't snore. I never snore. He snores. <laughs> I I actually had to hit him on the head a few times with a pillow in order for him to stop snoring. It worked. I don't know how, but it worked. Alrighty then. And before you say something along the lines of, oh, I smothered him to death. No, he's still alive. He's he's up and kicking. <laughs> okay. We, I... Believe me. But still. He, he kicked really hard when you tried to smother him. <laughs> no, I just hit him in the face with a pillow a few times. And then he stopped snoring. And then I got peaceful night's sleep. It was great. <laughs> okay. I, I ain't going to question anything. I can get I can get away with it only because I'm the girlfriend. <laughs> All right. It's only the girlfriend's allowed to attempt a concussion. <laughs> uh, oh please, like a pillow can do that. Uh, Depends on what you put in it. <laughs> a pillow. Uh, yeah. A pillow on top of a pillow. Yeah, like if you. Like, There's feathers. Yeah, I mean in the pillow. Case. I mean, if you put ten pound of feathers inside the pillowcase, I mean it's gonna still hurt, right? That's a lot of feathers. <laughs> I mean, it's just 10 pounds. It's not going to weigh that much. So, anywho, we wake up to two annoyed ponies where they just bicker a lot. And, yeah, they're, they're not having fun. Like, they're really, really annoyed with each other. Starlight finishes all the wheat cakes while Trixie finishes all the juice. And they are not friends. Like, they are really, really annoyed with each other. And we get to see uh, who now? Uh, Hufar. He seems to be enjoying himself. Camping out and stuff, having his own big, huge caravan. Yay. Although I just realized, I don't know why it took me so long to put two and two together. Hufar and Jafar. Are you sure he's not, are you sure he's not looking for a lamp? Nah. Gasp. Nah, he's, he's too good looking, man. Oh, oh, that, Norman, I didn't know you were so superficial. What? Oh Have you seen Jafar? If it clean cut. Smexy oh. beard, I'm sure, in some, some circles. Oh, man, like the... He's certain. He's certainly better than some of the stall owners. I don't know, man. Like that, that snake staff that he has. Nah, I'm into it, yo. Oh, come on. That just screams Freudianism. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, Trixie and Starlight perform their great magical act in Sonambula. And nah, I man, like their performance is off. And Hufar says, um, the performance in Ponyville seems really good. Uh, I promise it's not like this. It shifts to night and they fight again over some carrots and whatnot. And after their fight, like, Trixie says, you know what, I'm going to sleep in the bushes. It'll be much more quieter and stuff. Like, good day, sir. And Hufar says, yo, um, is there a problem here and stuff? And somehow, it seems that the next morning, Hufar and Starlight make a deal about wagons. And yeah, not cool, Starlight, not cool at all. This was the first time where I said Trixie did nothing wrong in this episode. Starlight, what the frick? <laughs> oh, come on, you could have engaged a sweetie bot just now. Yeah, Sorry. I think, no. I think this is the make or break moment for the episode. Okay, any reasons? Torterra? Oh, I well, thought you were going to still keep going. I will, but first I want to hear what Torterra has to say. Oh, uh, I agree too, though. This is something that I guess uh, Starlight did out of anger. She couldn't handle the wagon anymore. But that this was kind of a letdown for Starlight. I mean, never seen anything. We've never seen her do anything like this until now. But in all honesty, we haven't seen much of her doing anything like this before. I mean, logically thinking, uh, a solution is in front of them. And that said solution is... Uh, we are having a cramped living quarters. What is the solution? A uh, bigger living quarters. 
what is in front of them. So why not get that answer, right? And true, logically, that is the answer. But emotionally, no. And there's a few things going on for Trixie for this one. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure if I should go into it now or later after the show. But um, you know what? I'm going to go after we go to the thoughts and whatnot. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, really, sorry, but I'm going to add my two cents now, oh, okay. if you please. If you All please. Right, One, this seems to be the counterbalance to uh, Trixie and All Bottled Up. Remember how insufferable she was uh, to Starlight during that yeah, event? Yeah, I remember that one. A lot of fun. So now they've both been completely awful. This is in keeping with Starlight's character, though. She is very much a fan of the quick and direct solution. Emotional attachments and social cues or boundaries really are something with which she struggles. That is true. I do see that. I think because she grew up this magical protege, a lot of things were easy for her, things that were beyond the average pony. And so she never really had to deal with limits, which is why I think a lot of her philosophy is so extremist. If if something makes her fail, then it must be just pure evil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there's also one important factor. She wasn't there when Trixie talked about her emotional attachment to the wagon. True, true that too. Like, but by the same time too, it's something that Starlet should have not done even without that knowledge because the wagon was not her to trait in the first place. Oh, I I agree. But at the same time, again, this is Starlight's character, social. Norms and mores may not uh, have taken as strongly with her. Yeah, true that, true that. But at the same time, too, on a logical sense or in the logical way of thinking, the only reason why I can think Trixie doesn't want the wagon is because it's too big for her. Starlight and Trixie are just traveling for a bit. And once that's over, Trixie has to lug around the wagon. And said wagon is heavier than her previous one. And since it's a lot bigger, lugging that thing around ain't going to be easy. Which is what Starlight's about to learn. Yep, yep. yep. But anywho, they, they fight and they do the whole, oh yeah, I don't want to see you again. We're not friends. Yeah. So Trixie drags her stuff along and somehow stumbles upon her old wagon. And who fires there? And Trixie asks for her wagon back. And Hufar says, a deal's a deal. And nah, I'm going to keep the wagon. So the most logical thing for Trixie to do is lay down in the middle of the road and be a roadblock. Hufar says, you know what? Yeah, I can do this all day long. And they do. <laughs> all day long day. And meanwhile, Starlight is moving the wagon herself. So, is this karma? Yes. You bought it, you move it. And hey, the two male mares that we noticed from the song, they're there and they say they got inspired by Starlight and Trixie's song about becoming good friends and whatnot and uh, traveling and stuff. Yay, they made a raft out of their cart. Are there still packages in that raft? I don't know, man. Because someone's mail is getting wet. There's, There's no avoiding that. Well... There could be important packages in there. Oh, but you do remember who is in charge of the post office, right? In Ponyville? Yeah. I'm guessing... Don't know about elsewhere. Yeah, I'm guessing these two ponies are from Ponyville. Because they're at Gasly Gorge. No. Dorman, how dare you make assumptions? I'm just saying it's close. Rainbow Dash flew there. You know what happens when you make assumptions. You know what? You make an ass of you and me. <laughs> yeah. That is very offensive to donkeys. Well, again, I, I don't see species. I only see threats. And the donkey revolt will come one day. Hey. You you think that Mule is really just saying, no, no offense taken. No, he's planning. He's going to be the final villain of season nine. <laughs> oh, goodness me. But anywho, uh, Starlight here kind of reflects and feels bad. We get to see her traveling back to Sunembla. And catching up with Trixie and apologizes to her and stuff. And since the wagon's back there, Hufar says, I could trade the wagon, but only if you two can prove that you're really good friends. 
and they make the most awkward friendship chant ever. Oh my goodness, that's not good at all. And who far? That was the point. Yeah, not really, but who far doesn't buy it? But he appreciates that those two are willing to go through thick and thin and do the most idiotic, made up on the spot friendship chant ever. And there's proof of friendship there. So yeah, I'll I'll trade back. I'll trade back. Although there's a question: Is so far doing this to because he knows their friendship needs to be repaired, or is he just being stubborn? The Aeon of Dreams route. What is the Aeon of Dreams route? Creep everyone out? Well, the the Aeon of Dreams route is essentially doing stuff that you knew would happen from the beginning just for your own enjoyment. Like planning it out piece by piece over time. J- just for your own enjoyment because you're somehow psychic or something. Hmm. Are you just passively being evil? Pa- passively laying down the lines for others to follow, o- only to see it come together at the end for your own enjoyment. Somebody learns a lesson somehow. Yeah, probably. I don't know. But anywho, with that, who farces? I'll treat back the wagon and Starlight and Trixie here learns a lesson. That lesson being, they shouldn't stick together for extended periods of time. Yeah, they're not too close enough. Chit actually, but anywho, back in Ponyville, they agree that yeah, we, we're not ready for this kind of bonding experience. We, we need to get a little bit more closer before we can attempt this again, quote unquote. Let's go back to the Christmas special that came out. Yeah, they went on a road trip again, <laughs> but it wasn't as far, and I think they they did a better job of prepping. Yeah. But still. And maybe they made more room. Yeah, too. probably. Like they keep all of her Trixie stuff in Starlight's room or something like that for the holidays. Yeah. And they kidnap an old mayor, no old stallion. Oh no, what? Just hire hire the male mares back to uh, to move that trunk for them. They seem to got it down better. Probably. And with that episode ends. Or, you know, uh, before I could have put the old mare in there and then, you know, you could just easily blame them for stealing and be like, oh, I put him in the chest, but I'm going to blame them. <laughs> Aha! That's devious. But with that episode ends. So, let's go into final thoughts. Um, Silver, what do you think of that episode? Well, I, I had a lot of fun watching this. It, it's fun to watch this imperfect pair of friends. I mentioning all bottled up earlier with uh, the song of Twilight and Friends as they're all like, we're all best friends and we get along so great. Yeah. And here's Starlight and Trixie. And they are friends, but they it's not nearly so perfect or idealized. Yeah, not yet, actually. And in a lot of ways, it's it's more fun because of that. True, true. Uh, I love seeing them do this. I love seeing just a little bit of Saddle Arabia and Somnambulous Town. Mm-hmm. And just the the humor, the the locations. I thought this was a a really fun episode. The only downside is Starlight's moment of insensitivity and unawareness. Because I agree, she should have known better than to sell someone else's property. But again, this is Starlight Glimmer who has a very skewed view on social interaction. Which again makes me wonder, why is she the counselor for the School of Friendship? She probably thinks in logic terms, like data. In which case, uh, ownership is, would be secondary to effectiveness. True. And besides, she was sleep deprived when she made that decision. I think we should allow some uh, leniency on that alone. Yeah, true. But it makes the story really interesting. And it makes her character more flush out, per se. One can hope. And we hope that in the future, she doesn't repeat the same mistake and take this as a lesson learned. Well, anyway, um, Sabi, what do you think of said episode? Well, I- I'm just going to say it now. E- even though she might learn not to do this again, I'm I'm not leaving Starlight alone with any of my stuff anytime soon. This is why I keep everything close to me. <laughs> so true. So true. There's a lesson learned Th- there. Things like this is why I, I don't leave, like, my stuff alone with anyone, like, nearby, like, I, I keep my purse close. I keep everything close because... That's not a word! But 
Oh. Ah, there, the you sp- happy sweetie bot got triggered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She- <laughs> oh, she got triggered indeed. But I still enjoyed watching this episode just for, well, the ride of it. All right, all right. And Tara, what do you think of said episode? I really like this episode. I mean, it shows that, you know, they're not really that much. Like, they're not, um, you would say, super, super friends. Because, you know, every friendship always has problems. Like, when they first met each other, they, first she thought Trixie was using her. But then after she started warming up to her and then all bottled up, Starlight was holding in her emotions. And now in here, Trixie's holding in her emotions about the wagons. Like, eh, you know, this shows that you can't keep really keep secrets from your friends. And you got to tell them how you feel about things. Mm-hmm. I can see that. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I do like the interaction between Starlight and Trixie, and it seems really natural. And the lesson that Starlight had to learn the hard way was, yeah, I, I, get, I hope that in the future that she doesn't do this again, like sell another person's caravan. No, bad Trix, bad Starlight. Do I need to get a newspaper roll? I was going to say, it's like, Trixie did nothing wrong, except for maybe inviting Starlight. But other than that, she did nothing wrong. Yeah, I know, but she could explain why her reason to hold on to her old wagon. But still, that's besides the point. She also could have made room for her friend and maybe left behind some of her props in Starlight's care. True, true, true. true. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, she could always leave room in the PC box for Pokemon. Yeah, true. Wait, they don't exist in this universe. Uh, Pokemon are everywhere. You just haven't seen them yet. Besides, there's now like seven, seven generations, generations you have to make room for. I, I'm thinking. I, I'm seriously got a question for you guys. Like, why haven't they invented a spell that keeps everything in one neat, tidy place? You, you know, a spell like that, like um, storage compartment space, magic, something like that. No, I wouldn't know because I'm not a unicorn. No, Star Swirl did that. It's it's the spell he used to banish everyone to limbo. Oh, yeah. Imagine imagine for a moment if you use that spell just for storage purposes. Oh wait, my multi dimension pocket thing. You know that spell. Yeah, why not? That'd be terrifying. He's, the void between worlds is filled with everyone's junk. <laughs> uh yeah, but still uh, I really enjoyed this episode. Anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, we're going to switch over to comics. It's time to talk about My Little Pony, The Convocation of Creatures. Ooh. In which we get to talk about the uh, the perils and hardships of bureaucracy. Oh, no. Yes, democracy and bureaucracy. And other C's. Oh, no. C, si, senor. Oh, C, si, C, si, senor. Oh, no. So come back next week as we talk about My Little Pony issues 61 through 62. Yeah, this is a fun one, guys. Like, this is a fun one. Like, recording this episode back to back, like, it is fun for us. Like, I enjoyed this one. I, you know, I'm going to hold my tongue for a bit and continue on to that review. But anywho, so guys, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you, you can contact us at mbsrogmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on YouTube under Silver Quill or After the Fact. You can find me on the Twitters, MLP Silver Quill. Also, DeviantArt of MLP Silver Quill. And every Wednesday on Equestria Daily, I post a editorial or comic review. And I gotta say, in, uh, in this time of recording idw has not released any of the new comics they're saving that all for the end of the month i need my fix man what, really i need my why, fix. why in the month i don't know oh, all right that's strange but we've got the end of uh nightmare nights coming up and the start of the 75th issue and a and a double-sized story so i'm kind of wondering when we're gonna get it man <laughs> when we go get it i'm i'm, I'm wigging out here man um I'm going crazy. I'm sure you'll get your fix soon, man. I'm sure you get your fix soon. Why do you think I've been making fun of Pokemon and making all better of racist commentary this episode? I'm all messed up. Best of the I'm sorry. I'm taking out my aggressions on people. Torterra, just know, I'll always have a blue ball with your <laughs> name on it. What? Oh, boys. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
Seppi, what about you? Where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, uh, YouTube, and you can also donate donate me a coffee once you find Anime Christy. Ah. All right, then. <laughs> not not much else to say. I need my money. Please send me coffee. Oh. I I don't get paid for this, man. All right, then. And Tara, what about you? Well, they could find me on YouTube, DeviantArt, Facebook, or Twitter under the name Tortero1324. Or they could also find me on Patreon, which I recently just opened up. So, hey, you know, uh, maybe I can give some of that coffee and money to Safi while I'm at it. <laughs> please. <laughs> nice, nice. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, stitch your radio windows for like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. You'll hear us doing this show, but mobile, like on the iTunes and the Stitch Radio. Yay! And also, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's already access to the Review and Discussion Podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, Jeffrey, and myself. Like, thank you so much, guys, for your support. Go great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zizil Vakril. I am deprived of my coffee. I am Tortero 1234. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the VS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's the last time we should ever talk about Pokeballs, Great Balls, or any other kind of balls. Well, you definitely don't have Master Balls. Ooh, she did that.